Hello, everyone. My name is Sven Spohr. I'm working for Monality Power Systems already for four years. I am based in Germany, and I'm a product manager for Passive Components. As our topic is today um, related to the Passive Components inductors, so choosing the right inductor for your DC-DC converter. Um, going through the agenda, we will handle some uh, basics for uh, the magnetics, so how is the work wise of the inductors, uh, moving forward to the DC-DC converter introduction, and going uh, more in detail to the buck converter topologies, discussing about the relation pro for the topology with inductance, ripple current efficiency, also to differentiate saturation current, rated current, and see some efficiency comparison results. Um, okay, so uh, the first question of the first slide, it's what is an inductor? So an inductor is a very simple component and it's just a wire which is wounded in a cohesion. We can be using a core material uh, and if this core material is having a, a magnetic characteristic, so we can increase the electrical performance from the inductors. Other advantage for having a core material is to have a body which is carrying all the windings of the inductor. Um, we can be using also core material with no magnetic performance. It's just to have a body for uh, for the windings. So, but what is the main task of the inductor? Um, the inductors will oppose the change in current from a circuit. Uh, inductor, it's let's say responsible for having uh, for providing a constant current to the in into in the circuit. That means so uh, if the current is increasing in the circuit, um, inductors will try to keep the current from increasing. So we'll start to store the energy and managing the special amount it's required in the circuit. If the current is decreasing, uh, inductors will try to keep the current from decreasing. So it's storing all this magnetic energy in the body and releasing the current in the circuits um, as it is needed. Uh, inductors, they don't have a polarity, so we can use inductors in both ways. And there will be always a voltage across the inductors when there is a change of current over the time. So inductors can store induced electric energy in the magnetic, uh, as magne magnetic energy. So let's say, so how is this working? Uh, when current is flowing through the wire, a magnetic field is induced in the body. Inductors are temporary energy storage devices, so they will try to keep this energy from increasing or decreasing, generating an electromotive force in opposite direction. <clears throat> the magnetic field itself depends from uh, the geometries of this body, of this core material or this core we are using. It's dependent of the how much current is flowing through the coil and how many turns are we having in the uh, inductor. Um, now talking to the parameters, just want to remind you that we have a webinar um, recorded uh, available at monolithicpower.com. It's called Understanding Power Inductor Parameters, and it's available to uh, at the section of uh, webinars. It's more detailed uh, information about the parameters for inductors. Going back, um, the inductors are measured to in inductance. Uh, we measure the inductance, and it's and the units is in handles. So the inductance is what we are actually searching when looking for an inductor. But how is the composition of the inductor? So what is making the inductor? Um, the parameters making the inductor is just the cross-sectional cross area and the length from the inductor, so the shape, the geometry of the inductor, what depending on the core material as well. So what core material is we using? Every core material is having different uh, permeability and different um, electrical characteristics. And also dependent of uh, how many turns are we having in the inductor. 
So as we can see, we can divide the permeability. It's included is a mu r. This is um, making the most of the weight of making the inductance in an inductor. And we can divide this two section in core material information and on the windings. So the DC, DC converters basically are used to transform an input voltage level, a random level in a different level in the output side. There are several type of converters, uh, topologies, and the most common topologies for non-isolated DC-DC converters are the buck converters and the boost converters. Both converters from this side are um, stepping, are also called out step down converters, are going from high voltage level to a low output lo uh, voltage level. Boost converters from the other side are also called step up converters, so are going from low voltage level in the input side to a high voltage level at the output side. The buck configuration, so the circuit configuration, um, typically we will see a switching device, which is giving us all these on off stages of the uh, converter. And we will see the LC typical configuration of the buck converter. Um, buck converter, we say it's stepping down. So it's going from high voltage level to a low voltage level and regulated by the switching device. So when the switch is turning on, we want to deliver all the current or the necessary current to the output. So through the inductor and the inductor, what it's doing, it's to uh, regulating all this flow and uh, moving it forward to the, to the output on a constant way. When the switch is turning off, all this energy we're storing in the inductor in the on, uh, in the on step, it's being released in the circuit, still trying before collapsing, trying to uh, provide at, the, at a constant way all this necessary current in the circuit. All these on and off steps keep repeating many times in a second, so resulting in a continuous output. Uh, And when selecting an inductor, there are many parameters are very um, important to know because uh, the selection of the inductor makes a big influence on the performance and, and the electrical characteristic of the converter. Many, uh, usually in all I see data sheets, we see there are some recommendations, some suggestions, some calculations how to uh, select or how to set all these currents. Um, but this is something individual depending of the design of your converter. So just to understand better, I listed here down all uh, the currents that are mentioned usually in the data sheets. And let's start with the output current. So the output current is the current the device will be ramping more or less during the whole um, on and off uh, switching. So um, it's also called average current, inductor current, uh, and DC, IDC, or ERMS. But this uh, current, the E out, so the average current is related to the rated current in the inductors. So in the inductor data sheet, when you see uh, E out is related to the rated current, IDC. The rated current, uh, is giving us also some information about the copper losses. So the RDC, the resistance. EL max, it's the maximum current of the inductor, uh, which means actually it's the minimum requirement of saturation current in the data sheet of an inductor. This is also called uh, EL max, EL peak, uh, saturation current. And this is the output current adding half of the ripple current. Um, um, and the ripple current, so the peak of peak ripple current, uh, determinates the inductance, the inductance. So the inductance will be moving from the 
yield max to the yield min. And we will see more in detail in the next slides how is this working. Usually it's set uh, ripple uh, um, current with a ratio between 20 to 40% to start with the calculations. I have an example. So how is this uh, calculation? Um, we selected an evaluation board. So we're using the MP at IC MP2328. And here are the converter uh, specification or the parameters we're using to do the calculation. Uh, this is a very standard formula. It is for synchronous buck converter. And we determined that we are actually needing with these parameters, 11.5 microhenry. 11.5 microhenry is not really a standard value we can find in the market. So we need still to, to check what is the next nominal value available uh, in between all the uh, in between all this this result. So it's um suggested to, to try and test different inductance values because um needs to remind you that the inductances, the inductors, they will have inductance tolerances. Usually it's between 10 to 20%. And for example, if we take the 10 microhenry, it will be moving with tolerances between eight and 12 microhenry. So it's also important to have this in, in consideration when selecting the inductor. Of course, the most important thing, at minimum, we want to have this rated current in the inductor and this saturation current in the data sheet from the inductor. And how is this uh, making a difference when uh, having some um, measurements to see how is this ripple current, how is this behavior of the ripple current, depending on the inductance value we're selecting. Um, we're having here an example using exactly the same parameters, exactly the same board for all these uh, results using different uh, inductance values. It's the same size, same size, component size. And we're starting with the 6.8 microhenry as, as an example, where we can see a ripple current or peak to peak current from 1.6 to amps. So we can see the trend when the inductance value is going up we can see that the ripple current is decreasing. So this is something important um, to mention. So when selecting the inductor to, um, to start with a value and then from there see, okay, I need less ripple current, I need more ripple current. And from there start to move on, on the selection. So higher inductance, uh, higher inductance values will have smaller ripple current and lower inductance values will have higher ripple current make it more visual. So when we select the inductance value and we go higher on inductance, we will start to move smaller in this uh, ripple current and smaller, but also having higher inductance value will increase the resistance because we are adding more turns to reach this inductance value. And when we are going lower in inductance value, the ripple current is going higher. So the um, and higher and higher. And when we increase, um, uh, decrease more, the even more the lower indu uh, the inductance value, we can also stepping in on the discontinuous conduction mode of the converter. Um, of course, lower inductance, we have higher uh, core losses, but also lower uh, copper losses. So it's a way to find a balance um, of the inductor. So what is necessary or uh, to have a mix of both, but still you are doing the calculation for the ripple current. So remember just higher ripple current will, uh, will increase the, um, the AC losses. To make it also more visual, so how is the efficiency when having different uh, inductance values? using exactly the same IC, so MP2328 and the uh, MPS inductors, MPL AL6060, we can see then when we increase the inductance value, in this case, the highest is 15 microhenry, um, we see that the efficiency is best when the value is higher. 
but still uh, need to mention that the resistance is also higher. So at the end, probably will uh, dominate all these couple losses. When we see this a kind of efficiency charts, we can say that at the beginning we had the constant uh, losses, the constant losses. At the mid part, we will see more uh, the core losses, and at the end of the curve, we will see more the copper losses. Um, in relation to the um, to the core losses, we can say that at higher the inductance value we are selecting, the lower ripple current we will get. Lower ripple current, it's um, related to the core losses, so we will have less uh, AC losses and higher efficiency. And how we are moving on the ripple current on the uh, saturation chart. Um, just to have an introduction, the saturation current is not a standard uh, definition in the market. So every vendor, every inductor vendor is having different um, standard. Usually it's between 20 to 30% inductance drop. At that point, we are measuring the saturation current. And we can say we have two kind of uh, behavior, saturation behaviors. We can say that um, we have the soft saturation, soft saturation behavior, which is really gradually going on saturation over the saturation uh, over the current. And we have the hard saturated inductors, which are uh, which are at certain point they are reaching the the they are dropping down in just in saturation. Um, there are some differences also. This is depending of the air gap, so how it's distributed in the core material. So there are different kind of uh, inductors if there is shielded or not shielded or uh, molded inductors, but in general, we can say for molded inductors is this behavior at 25 degrees. For example, we are measuring this and at 100 degrees, it's very similar. So it's really very stable across temperatures when we are using molded inductors. And when we are us using um, uh, drum core type inductors, we can see the trend that at 25 degrees, we will have um, higher uh, value on saturation and uh, at higher temperatures, we're moving um, to, the, to the left side of the chart. Of course, uh, drum core inductors, they have the advantage that we can reach even higher inductance values. And this is because we have higher permeability. Um, Molded inductors will have usually low permeability to this core material, and we will have some limitation of inductance values. Now going back to the example from before, so when we are selecting these uh, currents, uh, we will be moving from this uh, average current, which is two amps. We will be having a ripple current between 1.6 and 2.4, and um, we can say we will be moving in a safe range if we are still working between um, 100 is difficult, but between 10 to 20 to 30%, we're still safe uh, in a safe range. But just have in mind that um, at higher current or at the current we are using the inductor, we will have uh, different uh, inductance values. So the inductance value is moving up and down depending on um, how is this switching device of the converter. So molded inductors will provide more uh, flexibility and wider operate, uh, operation, uh, operating ranges because we will have less inductance movement in the chart. So in the measurement, we have more stable inductance value. You can see we have this range, which is very, very, very small. And in comparison with the uh, uh, drum core uh, inductors, when we reach the, the drop knee point, so it's the point where we are going in saturation, uh, beyond this point, so usually it's 30%, at that point we are, uh, the functionality of the inductor is reduced. 
And also, um, we we see that they are just going in saturation at some point. So we will have even higher ripple current. So the inductance value will be, the difference will be higher. So between these 2.4 amps and the 1.6 amp. So in this case, um, it's going to be much higher. Of course, this is uh, an example, which just to make it more visual, if we are working more on this range, it's a yeah, different story. When talking about a uh, rated current, there is also another really uh, standard definition. So every vendor is having different um, uh, characteristics or different definition where we are measuring the rated current. Rated current is related to the uh, copper, so, so to the self-heating of the windings. Um, and we can see that many vendors are usually doing to 20 to 40 degrees, but still there are some different exotic values in the market. So usually you need to check in the chart, but this value you can read so at 20 or 40 degrees. So what is actually defined or, um, in, in the data sheets is not your limitation. The real limitation is the maximal operating temperature which is giving also in all data sheets. It's a value you can read, and it's usually 125 degrees up to 155 degrees. And this is depending from the type of the inductors, how is the composition, how many elements uh, it's having the inductor. But um, this is the parameter is giving you the limitation of how much current you can use um, in this inductor. Important is to know how is going to be the product, uh, the final product, the ambient temperature where it's going to be used. And um, rated current is the self-heating thing, doctor. So we can, uh, when adding all these both values, we can see that we, we don't, we cannot exceed this uh, maximum current. Okay, so don't do not exceed the maximum operating temperature of the. Of Another parameter which is uh, giving uh, or helping to reduce the noise in, in your converter is the start of winding indication. Uh, the start of winding indication is something you can recognize at the marking or in the data sheet of the inductor, but usually it's in the, when you have the component itself in your hands, it's the, the dot you can see in the surface and this dot is giving you the information when it's going the first winding in the inductor, because the first layer of the inductor is getting shielded by the second layer and the third layer and so on. So it's having a self shielding effect. And this can help to reduce the emissions caused by the inductor and also placing it in the right way in the, uh, placing it next to the switching node the start of winding to the switching out uh, for your application can also help to reduce the acoustic noise caused by the frequencies. Need to mention also that this uh, start of winding indication is not a standard thing you see in all inductors. Some inductor vendors are using um, um, mention of this uh, start of winding in the data sheet but it's not a standard you can see in the market. To see here um, advantages from uh, how to do the selection of the inductor. When going on design stage for your converter, so calculate the required inductance value. Think about the tolerances of this inductance value. And from there, Calculate uh, with your parameters. You need the input voltage, output voltage, output currents. With these parameters, you need to calculate the output current from your application, the EL max. Output current, remember, is the rated current. EL max is the saturation current. And when selecting the inductor, at least we need to have these currents. Um, also, another factor that is making um, 
difference, uh, it's the frequency. At higher frequency values, it's important to see in detail how is the behavior of the inductor. Um, MPS is showing the uh, frequency charts char uh, charts in the data sheet, just to be sure that uh, we are working in the safe range. Also, if EMI is a topic, to use a shielded inductors and to increase the performance to uh, place correctly the start of winding um, in the in the PCB. Rel uh, related to the currents, saturation current, we have two types of currents, uh, behaviors of soft and hard saturation current. Um, the peak current is the maximum, is the minimum saturation current we need to select. And remember that we are moving with a ripple current between two values. So where we are working, what is our um, ripple current in the saturation. And remember, lower inductance value will have higher ripple current. Higher ripple current means also higher um, core losses. Higher inductance value from the other side, lower ripple current and better efficiency. When selecting the rated current of the inductor, think also have in mind the, how it's going to be the your application, what it's the ambient temperature. So do, do not exceed the maximal operating temperature from uh, that it's giving the data sheet. Um, low RTC, when selecting the doctor, if try to select lower RTC value, because this is also reducing the copper losses and also giving higher, even higher IDC value. Going to the um, MPS inductors, we have several type of inductors which are actually fitting to the most common topologies in um, um, nonlinear topologies in the market. We have this MPL AT series, which is a molded inductor, including the start of winding indication. Um, the, the saturation behavior is going on soft saturation behavior, so it's stable over the higher temperatures. And we can uh, work with this inductor up to 125 degrees. So it's the maximal operating temperature. It's for low profile applications because it's very small in profile. So uh, uh, the height, the maximum, it's 1 to 1 1.2 millimeters. Also, having a molded inductor, including the start of winding indication um, in a soft saturation behavior. So it's also stable at higher temperatures. So it's not changing the, the inductance value is not changing at high temperatures. Um, the working uh, operating temperature is from 125 to 155 degrees, depending on the size. Working from small to big size components. We have also the A MPL AL series. It's a flat wire construction uh, uh, winding construction inside. The flat wire is even uh, bring less uh, resistance in, in the inductor, so for, for better performance. Also, it's included in the start of winding indication, soft saturation, stable across temperatures, maximal operating temperature 155 degrees, and it's from mid size, so 4 to by 4 millimeters up to 6 by 6 millimeters. And also we have drum core type inductors. In this case, we are having semi-shielded inductors. Semi-shielded inductors are covered with a magnetic um, blue uh, over the windings to increase the magnetic characteristics of the inductor. Um, we can use these inductors. Uh, they are specified up to 125 degrees and it's from small to medium-sized components. To mention, so how is the performance from the NPS doctors in general? Uh, where to pay attention? Um, it's um, just by looking at the inductor itself, you don't really see how it's going to perform. So it's very difficult to see or to predict how it's going to look like the efficiency of the inductors. 
by just the view, we can see on the right side the MPS inductor, on the left side, uh, one of the inductors in the market. The first impression is same size, so it's not really same color, same type of contacts, but still, uh, at first view, we can see that the start of winding indication is not given at this time. Um, the electrical parameters are very similar. So I don't really um, can see, so what is going to be the difference as uh, in the efficiency. But when we measure the inductor in real uh, application, we can see um, in this case, MPS inductor, this MPS inductor is at the, uh, the blue, blue line. And we can see that MPS inductors are having very high efficiency, very high quality. So we are having a very good selection to be very competitive in the market um, to squish the last percent of efficiency for your applications. So important is also to, to, to see and to uh, place uh, properly this start of wine. So this can also help to increase the, the efficiency for your application. Okay, so now it's time for the question and answers. So just remember, we have a, a inductors product page at monolithicpower.com. Uh, in this page, we can find the inductor selector tool. So this is this tool is helping you to select inductance value, the, the current level for your application for bug, boost, uh, synchronous or non-synchronous type. Also, we have the flyer, it's a product brochure. It's uh, in one page, an overview for the molded inductors. In one page, the overview for semi-shielded inductors, which is helping to do a very quick selection of uh, the right component. And also to remind you that we have the uh, recorded webinars and uh, at the section from monolithicpower.com uh, on their webinars. All right. <laughs> Now, Great, thank uh, you, Sven. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Now, if anyone has any questions, please use the QA button located at the bottom of the Zoom meeting interface and we'll answer them live. One of our most asked questions is if the session is being recorded. It is being recorded and will be sent out to all registrants and posted on our website within the next couple of days along with this uh, PDF of the presentation. Um, we already have a good amount of questions in the queue, so we'll start. Um, first one, I believe this was when you were showing um, one of the saturation current slides. It says on the left side of the efficiency curves, there are some sharp peaks and valley valleys. What causes this? This this is just the starting. So when we start the application, we will see peaks everywhere. So there is no very clean. Um, we are measuring together with several components and not just the inductor. Uh, inductor and the IC are doing mostly of all these peaks, but we have also capacitors in the board. So it's uh, uh, when all components are playing together, they're having some uh, peaks and uh, when current is flowing and the voltage levels are changing. Great, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, next question, I'm working on a buck converter with different output load. Um, at higher output, current is higher and inductance value is lower. At lower output, current is higher and induct inductance value is higher. Now I have to select an inductor, which will operate in both cases, higher and lower current. Please share your inputs. Um, higher and lower higher and lower current. So I, I will suggest to work, um, holding to this slide. So it's the meaning that you are having this ripple current actually um, very wide, if I'm understanding well. Um, when you are um, selecting or doing the calculations, when you are having even higher, um, ripple ratio, so this ripple current, when this is very high, you will have um, also higher losses. So it's um, 
difficult to say. Um, when you have even bigger size in doctor, maybe you can start to decrease all these losses. Maybe it's going on the direction to select um, big size component. All right, thank you. Um, next question. In the rated current slide, the y-axis has a temp of Kel Kelvin does not make sense. What does this mean? Yeah, Kelvin, if this is changing in Kelvin or, or centigrade, it's the same. So 20 degrees, it's, it's changing. At the, it, it's exactly the same result. So if this is 20 degrees uh, centigrade or, or Kelvin, it's exactly the same result. So it's a um, difference. Thank you. Uh, next question, where are your molded inductors manufactured if multiple factories, which locations are automotive qualified? We don't have automotive qualified inductors. So uh, we are manufacturing in China. So we are all, all, all inductors are, um, or mostly of the inductors are manufactured in China. Yes. And Thank you. we have several oh. production sites, yes, several partners uh, working with us. All right. Thank you. Uh, this next question I might have you read. It has to do with the basic inductance calculation equation. Um, and I don't want to butcher this one. Mm -hmm. This one. OK. <clears throat> So it's um, what what is the error on this uh, calculation? So as I can see on the comment, it's not correct. Well, this is uh, when calculating the inductance value. We will have several parameters. We will have um, more about the. Permeability is making the most of the weight of the inductance value. So the depending of what core material are we using, the permeability is a value from about 100 to 1,500 uh, uh, units, the permeability. So it's making mostly of the inductance value. The um, geometry, so the cross-sectional area and the length, it's also making a difference. But adding several turns to the main uh, core material, it's the one doing the, the fine tuning. It's the small tune or volume tune, which is changing the inductance value. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question, is the purpose of shielded inductor to reduce emissions? Yes, the shielded inductors are, um, let me try to explain better with a picture. Uh, having shielded inductors um, like this, we have several types of shield. Uh, shield. Um, having a really complete shielded inductor, like a molded inductor, we have the lowest emissions because it's complete cover by, it's one, one component itself. So it's pressed and covered uh, and closing completely as one single component. When we have, for example, this kind of uh, components, uh, just with epoxy glue, like right now it is. So we have, we will have some kind of magnetical shielding effect but still it's not really as good as a complete closing doctor. If we are adding to this a shielding, so a ferrite or uh, material, so shielding effect, uh, closing the doctor, we will still need to glue somehow the shielding. So we will still have some open spaces on the border, which is uh, much better than uh, open inductor, but the best effect or emission will uh, will be bringing the molded inductors because it's completely closed component. Thank you. Um, next question: In an inductor, which losses are dominant 
um, in terms of DC losses do being dominant or AC losses being dominant in a good design inductor? Difficult to say because the losses or the AC losses are depending for so many parameters, are depending from the temperature, are depending from the frequency, if there is a pressure in the, in the component itself, uh, depending of what core material are we using. Um, it's depending of that. So, um, but you can see usually in, in the curves or in general, um, you can see the core loss is more on the midsection area of the efficiency curve on the chart, and the um, the core loss, the copper losses are dominating at the higher current levels. Yeah, but it's difficult to say what is stronger or higher. It's there depending from so many parameters. All right, thank you. Uh, next question, MPL AL 6060-100 uh, inductor has LSAT lower than LDC. This does not make sense. Oh, really? Um, it's something I need to check, so I don't have really in, <laughs> uh, memorized the currents, but um Saturation current is more related to the core losses. IDC, it's the self-heating of the component. And the AL6060, it's bigger. Let me see. I think it's here. Wait, wait. Maybe I did. Um... I don't know if it's a type error, but um, yeah, it's something I need to check. But yes, you're true. So in sometimes they are depending of the size or how many turns are we having. Um, and usually this is a flat wire construction. So you, we will have very low resistance. And this could be the answer because we have very low resistance. So we will, ha we will have even higher um, rated current. And this could be the reason why it's so high in this case in comparison to saturation current. All right, thank you. Uh, next question, are your DC to DC converter data sheets already suggesting MPS inductors to be used for some reference designs? Yes, yeah, so we have several reference designs using the inductor. So we are testing and stressing the inductors on qualification together. Um, you can find several evaluation boards uh, where we are referenced in, in the website. Um, usually these are called EV, uh, EVL, uh, so evaluation boards with an L at the end, so including the MPS inductors. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next question, I'm working on a buck converter for USB power delivery, which means the buck will supply 5 volt, 9 volt, 12 volt, 15 volt, and 20 volt. Should I have any special consideration on the inductor selection? I'm not sure if these are options, so I'm not really familiar with the converters, so I'm more familiar with inductors, but uh, probably it's just a suggestion to work on different um, power voltage ranges. Um, if not, if I'm wrong, um, you can also to as alternative to, to check with the FIE colleagues from your area to be sure what is the recommendation for that one. Thank you. Um, next question. I've been told there are basically three different types of inductors and apologies if I butcher this, but metal alloy, fer ferrite multi-layer and ferrite wire round. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but all, can all three of these types of inductors serve as power inductors in a switching power supply? Seems to me the logic should prevail here. Only one wire round inductor can truly be acceptable power inductor in switching power supply. Well, it depends. Depends on the power level you are looking for. The, for example, the um, metal alloy 
it's this kind of inductor. So there are molded inductors. Uh, the metal alloy is a mix of uh, uh, magnetic materials, nickel, zinc, ferrite. So it's a uh, own recipe for every every vendor is having their recipes. That there there are no inductors that are same in the market from different vendors. Uh, so it's a recipe and a metal alloy. And when talking about ferrite, multi layer, multi layer inductor. So it's usually the construction. It's very special, so it's very small. Multi layer are not big size components, so they will not bring as much current as it's bringing this kind of inductors because they are much bigger. Uh, multi layer are thin layers of wire, so the current level is going to be less. And the, the, the ferrite wire wound inductors like this are having different characteristics. So it's different core material. We can reach even higher inductance value. So we are, they are used also as power inductors. But um, you know, they are more flexible. They are, in this case, for higher inductance values. Uh, several sizes is the most common inductor in the market. And uh, for very high uh, current application, it's really suggested the metal alloy inductor. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question, how can we choose the type of inductor in a converter? For example, the input and output filters. How can we choose type of inductor? Um, <clears throat> We'll try to move to this one, move to this one. Uh, when selecting the converter for, for your selection, so if you're working on a buck converter or a boost converter, you will need to know uh, where, are you, where, where are you starting, so at what level, so what is your input voltage, and you need to know how it's going to be your output voltage, so from, from where, from where. And, and also the current. So how is your uh, current uh, in the application? Um, I think I have the formula here. Just give me a second. I think it's here. So to select inductors, you see, you need the input, output voltage, frequency, ripple current, and output um, output current. From here, you can do the calculation. Depending on from what you are um, looking for, if it's a bug, a boost, there are several kind of um, possibilities, synchronous or not synchronous uh, applications. Uh, but anyways, in the data sheets from mostly of all ICs are some suggestions with formulas how to do the calculations. Alternative, I suggest to use the MPS um, tool. We have a tool online on their, uh, the inductors product page uh, where you can put exactly these values, these parameters there, and it's doing the calculation for you. Thank you. Um, next one is actually a comment back on the inductance calculation equation question. Um, and it looks like they were, their question was aimed to calculate the inductor based on the buck converter requirements. I think it's uh, this formula, right? Um, yeah, um, I'm not really sure where is the, when you calculate the inductor based on buck converter requirements. Yes, this is the formula. So to calculate the inductance uh, from the inductor um, when we are having a synchronous buck converter, maybe this is the difference you are tending. Um, the other formula, it's kind of different when we are having a non-synchronous buck converter where we have the diode um, uh, when the, the switching is not doing the diode work. Thank you. Um... Next question, I'm currently working on a project of designing a DC to DC boost converter. Can you please tell me the essentials that can be taken into consideration while choosing an inductor? So boost converter, you will be going from low to high voltage. So you need to pay attention on what voltage it's uh, available uh, depending on the voltage. Uh, inductors are sensitive to voltage, so you need to check with the vendors so what is the voltage level for 
that inductor and it's the same so it's very uh, straightforward the calculations suggest always to see the ic data sheets there are some recommendations what to select it's very specific um, um, recommendation in their, their data sheets but also the calculation it's very standard so we um you can use the any tool for calculate the inductor. It's giving you also the information about um, inductance and the current, and also about the ripple current. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next question. Is there a way to increase buck converter efficiency at lower uh, load cur currents? Efficiency at low currents. One way is uh, yeah, it's going on with bigger inductors. <laughs> when going on a bigger size, so you can um, oversize the inductor and get better efficiency. But uh, try to get an inductor with very low RTC resistance. And Um, yeah, I would think to go a little bit concise and very low RDC resistance could be the answer for that to get better efficiency at low currents. Thank you. Um, that looks like that was our last question. Um, so if anyone has any other questions, we'll hold here for a little bit longer. Um, so you can quickly type those in. Um, Otherwise, thank you everyone for joining. Um, we look forward to having you at many future sessions. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. So thank you everyone. And we'll see you again at another webinar. Thank you everyone.